now we move on to fully integrated markets with transmission consideration so with transmission consideration we use locational marginal price to settle the market the locational marginal price is derived from three different components one is energy the second one is congestion and the third one is losses so from the name itself um, the locational marginal price says that it is location specific and zone to zone it differs so basically an increment in load at a particular node uh, if it is fed from a far off generator then the price will be different um, when compared to a generator feeding the a nearby generator feeding that particular increment in load um now um the two types of markets in this fully integrated market is um this is a broad uh, these are broad categories day ahead market and real time market so prior to the day of operation um we schedule everything uh, that is what is the day ahead market uh, these are mostly financially bounded schedules because we don't have the actual idea of network parameters and actual energy balance and line flow so we are just concerned of uh, sourcing the power from the cheapest sources cheapest units uh, that is a concern now in the real time market deviations are considered um, that means the actual consumption and generation with respect to the scheduled consumption and generation is checked um, uh, in short terms uh, maybe in every 5 minutes and uh, the iso instructs the uh, willing sources to um uh, to compensate the unbalance that is what is done now um coming to real time market real time market is more or less uh, same as the energy imbalance market so energy imbalance market is a broad term um the management of energy imbalance can be done from reserve market or uh, some other avenues uh, uh i mean to be specific uh, we have to see the guidelines of the market but the, a broad term is energy imbalance market that's all mm. now we'll see how the uh, concept of lmp is uh, used to settle the markets at different nodes now lmp is calculated at each node on the system so node to node the lmp differs pricing is based on market clearing price using last megawatt plus 1 at each node so for the next increment from which generator um we are sourcing the power for this increment based on that the uh, price is uh, price differs now um we have a figure here in which nodes 1 and 2 are shown with a line um having some flow of power but this flow of power is the amount of power that is flowing through this line is well below the maximum capacity of the line flow okay so in that case uh, both the nodes will have same locational marginal price this we will see in the coming example so we have two nodes nodes 1 and 2 uh, two loads load 1 connected to node 1 and load 2 connected to node 2 load 1 is 299 megawatts and load 2 is 890 megawatts now the total system load is 890 plus 299 which is uh, equal to uh, 1189 megawatts so to get 1189 megawatts or to feed 1189 megawatts we have eight generators here um, we have listed eight generators here uh, they have uh, corresponding offers at uh, $35, $36, $38, $40, again $40, $42, $48 and $50. So these four generators, these red ones are at node 1 and this uh, blue, these blue ones are uh, at node 2. Okay. So from the cheapest generator we start uh, feeding the demand. We start filling the total load demand. The total load demand is 1189. Okay. so for 1189 we know that uh, this 200 plus 200 plus 200 plus 200 this is 800 then 800 plus 200 uh, is 1000 1000 plus uh, 1189 from this 200 megawatts capacity of g22 we take 189 so at uh, till this point we can go uh, in the in the increasing order of um, prices okay so that is what we are going to do now um, 
we have at node 1 299 megawatts right so 200 megawatts is taken from g11 which is the cheapest generator okay now the next cheapest generator is uh, um, g12 so 99 megawatts is taken from g12 that supplies the total load of uh, node 1 okay but g12 has a remaining capacity of 101 this can be used to feed the load at node 2 okay so from the remaining capacity of g12 we start for feeding the, the load at uh, node 2 okay so 101 from g12 okay now 200 from g13 the next cheapest generator is g g13 then the next cheapest generator is g14 so now you can see all the four generators are at node 1 are used are utilized um, and these three generators 1 2 1 3 and 1 4 are utilized to um, pump the pump power at uh, node 1 um, uh, to node 2 through the line uh, the, through the given line transmission line so the capacity is 600 megawatts but the total which is pumped from node 1 is 200 plus 200 plus 101 which is 501 which is well below the 600 megawatts capacity okay now the total load demand is uh, 890 at node 2 out of which uh, 501 is pumped from node 1 but there is a 5 megawatts loss in the line so 496 will only reach node 2 okay so uh, out of 890, 496 comes from node 1. So the remaining is 394 megawatts, which would be produced from the units at node 2 itself. So this 394, again, the cheapest unit is $40 per megawatt hour. This is G21 at node 2. So 200 can be taken from here and 194 can be uh, taken from the second one, G22. So now we are at this generator, G22. Um, 194 is taken from G22 and remaining uh, capacity is 6 megawatts at this particular generator. So now any increment in the system load will be fed from G22 and the price for this marginal unit is $42 per megawatt hour. Whether it is at node 1 or node 2, it happens like that. Because um, if it is from node 2, then uh, G22 will be incremented. If it is at node 1, then also G22 will be incremented, right? G22 will be incremented because uh, G um, at, at node 1, all the generators are already full. Okay, that is what is done. So at both nodes, we have LMP as $42 per megawatt hour. As the uh, power that is flowing through the line is well below the, um, it is far below the uh, maximum capacity of 600 megawatts. It is only 501. Okay. Now with transmission constraints, next example. So now the transmission capacity is going to be changed to 300 megawatts. Say the transmission capacity is now 300 megawatts. In this case, 299 is already taken from G11 and G12, right? Now um, there is no option of uh, going to the um, Next, uh, uh, there is no option of going beyond 300 megawatts through the line, right? So 299 is taken from um, uh, G11 and G12. Then if 101 megawatt is taken from G12 and 199 megawatts is taken from G13, this 101 plus 199 will make uh, 300 megawatts, which is flowing through the line. So that hits the transmission capacity now. So we stop here at G13. We are not going to dispatch G14. Okay, instead of G14, this G23 comes into play. Okay, G23 comes into play. So 300 megawatts is pumped from node 1 uh, to node 2, but uh, 3 megawatts is lost. So 297 only reaches node 2. 890 is the total load at node 2. So the difference between 890 and 297 is 593, which should be produced from node 2 from the generators uh, connected to node 2. So for this 593, the cheapest is G21, the next cheapest is G22, and next is G23. So 200 plus 200 plus 193. So at present, we are at this particular generator. But here, what is the difference? The transmission line has already hit its maximum limit, right? So if there is an increment in node 1, that will be fed from which generator that will be fed from this one 
38, the G13, because G13 is uh, now only uh, some more capacity is there in G13. So G13 can be um, uh, what to say you know, the the output can be increased from G13. Anyway, that is not going to be pumped to the line that will feed the local load at node one. So $38 is the LMP at uh, uh, node one. But what about node two? At node two, we are at G23, right? So uh, if there is an increment at node two. It cannot come from node one because already the transmission line transmission line has hit the limit. So it should come from G23, right? G23, what is the cost of G23? The cost of G23 is 48. So $48 is the LMP at uh, node two. So here we have different LMPs at different nodes, at nodes one and two, 38 at node one and 48 at node two. Now, LMP when considering losses. See, uh, uh, the, the derivation of LMP here, you have seen that energy plus congestion plus losses. In the first case, we have seen the energy. In the second case, when the transmission capacity was hit, congestion was also considered. Now we are going to consider the losses. OK, so now um, when coming to losses, another example is given here, nodes three and four, in which uh, uh, load of a load demand of 100 megawatts is connected to node three and a load demand of 190 megawatts is associated with node four. And the line loss is 10 megawatts. 200 is injected from here, 190 reaches here. Okay. Now you see the price at node 3 is $40 per megawatt hour. It is given. Okay. It is given. Uh, price at node 3 is $40 per megawatt hour because this 100 megawatt is um, the, the uh, is filled using the costliest generator at node 3 to, to fill this particular demand. And suppose uh, it has some more capacity. So any increment at node 3 uh, will be fed from a generator uh, uh, of uh, uh, of cost dollars forty per uh, megawatt hour. Okay, so this is the um, LMP here. Now at node four, the problem is uh, actually forty dollars is the LMP, but uh, the the node four LMP is forty dollars, but we are considering the loss also. So 200 is pumped from here, 190 only reaches here. So we multiply this 40 with the um, 200 and divide it by 190. So uh, the LMP at node 4 is going to be $42.11 uh, per megawatt hour. Okay, that is what we get. Um, now, if more losses are there in the line, suppose 200 is pumped and 180 only reaches here, then 20 megawatts is a difference, right? So then this will become 200 divided by 180. So this price is going to increase. The, the price at node 4 is going to increase. That means according to the increase in loss, the price at node 4 is going to increase. This is because an increment in load, um, any increment in load at node 4 is uh, causing some extra losses at the in the line. So. Uh, uh, so the the unit set the load set uh, node fours uh, node four should be penalized for this particular loss. So that is done right according to losses. This amount is going to increase. So uh, that's all from the LMP side and the coming topics from our lectures. The uh, the coming lectures are um, ancillary service markets, then financial transmission rights. Virtual trading, financial instruments to create price convergence. Um, that means uh, risk hedging tools, risk hedging tools, futures, options, and swaps. Then capacity markets to ensure enough generation to meet peak demand. So we will discuss this in the coming lectures. That's all. Thank you.